The research vessel Polar Star had been sailing through the cold Arctic waters for three weeks already. The crew, led by Captain John Anderson, was on an important mission to study the effects of global warming on the Arctic ice. The scientists on board were gathering data on the thickness of the ice sheet, water temperature, and the state of the local ecosystem. Over time, fatigue began to take its toll on the team, but everyone understood the importance of their work. No one could have guessed that this routine expedition would soon turn into an incredible adventure. Suddenly, the calm of the Arctic day was interrupted by the cry of the lookout. Polar bear to starboard, came his excited voice. The entire crew rushed to the sides to catch a glimpse of this majestic animal. However, what they saw made them freeze in astonishment. A huge polar bear appeared to be chasing their ship. It was so unusual that Captain Anderson ordered the ship to slow down for a better look at what was happening. The animal was showing strange behavior. It kept trying to stand on its hind legs, making loud sounds and pointing its paw in a certain direction. Its powerful paws sliced through the icy water with incredible strength and grace. The crew started a heated discussion. Some thought the bear was just hungry and looking for easy prey. Others believed the animal might be injured or sick. The tension on the ship grew with every passing minute. Chief Engineer Pete even suggested scaring the bear away with the ship's siren, but the captain rejected this idea. Dr. Emily Harris, an experienced biologist, was carefully watching the bear through her binoculars. Her hands trembled slightly with excitement as she noticed something unusual. This isn't aggression, she muttered, her eyes still fixed on the binoculars. It looks like the bear is desperately trying to tell us something. Emily recalled all her years of studying Arctic wildlife, but she had never encountered such behavior. Hearing Dr. Harris's words, Captain Anderson made a risky decision. He ran his hand through his graying beard, took a deep breath, and ordered the ship to come to a full stop and lower his small boat for closer observation. Emily volunteered to lead this dangerous mission, despite some crew members' protests. As the boat with Emily and two seasoned sailors, Mike and Tom, pulled away from the ship, the hearts of those on board stood still. No one knew what to expect from this close encounter with one of the world's most dangerous predators. Mike gripped the oars tightly, his knuckles turning white with tension. Tom kept checking and rechecking the safety gear, trying to distract himself from the rising fear. The boat slowly approached the bear. The icy wind bit at the faces of the researchers, but they ignored it, focusing entirely on the approaching animal. The predator, noticing the people, unexpectedly swam toward them. Mike was ready to turn the boat around, his hand instinctively reaching for the flare gun. But Emily stopped him with a gesture. She had noticed something strange in the bear's eyes. It wasn't a predator's gaze, but rather a plea. The bear swam dangerously close to the boat. All three researchers held their breath. Drops of icy water splashed from the bear's powerful strokes, falling on their faces and mixing with their sweat. Then something incredible happened. The bear started making sounds that resembled whimpering more than growling. It kept pointing its paw in one direction and its eyes seemed filled with desperation. Risking her life, Emily leaned over the side of the boat to get a better look at the bear. Her heart was pounding so hard it felt like it would leap out of her chest. Its behavior is very unusual, she said in a shaky voice. It seems like the bear is asking for help. This thought seemed unbelievable, but the more they observed the bear's behavior, the more they became convinced it was true. The bear showed no signs of aggression, and its actions were too purposeful to be mere curiosity. It kept diving underwater as if trying to show the researchers something. After a long discussion with the captain over the radio, interrupted by static and the crackling of ice, the decision was made to follow the bear. It was risky, but intuition told the people that they had to do it. Captain Anderson, standing on the bridge, gripped the rail tightly, knowing that this decision could cost them everything. The ship slowly moved in the direction the bear had indicated. Huge icebergs constantly blocked the way, forcing the captain to maneuver with extreme caution. Every impact of the ice on the hull sent a whirring echo through the hearts of the crew. The journey lasted several hours. The tension on board was growing with each passing minute. Some crew members began openly expressing their dissatisfaction, thinking the whole idea was crazy and dangerous. A heated argument broke out in the mess hall, threatening to turn into an open conflict. 
but Captain Anderson and Dr. Harris were determined to solve this mystery, even if it meant risking their careers and reputations. The weather began to worsen rapidly. The sky was covered with heavy gray clouds and a strong wind began howling like a pack of hungry wolves. The waves grew taller and the ship started to sway violently. The equipment on deck creaked ominously, threatening to break loose from its moorings. Captain Anderson began seriously worrying about the safety of the ship and crew, his face becoming serious and focused. The polar bear seemed to sense their doubts. It started swimming faster, its powerful body cutting through the waves with incredible speed. It kept looking back at the ship, as if begging them not to stop. Its behavior became more desperate, only increasing the intrigue. Emily couldn't take her eyes off the animal, her scientific mind refusing to believe what was happening, but her heart told her they were on the verge of an incredible discovery. Suddenly, a shout came from the radio operator in the cabin. He ran out onto the deck, waving a piece of paper, his face pale with fear. He reported that he had received a storm warning. A severe storm was approaching their area, and they had only a few hours to find shelter or get out of the danger zone. The news spread through the ship, causing a wave of panic among the crew. Captain Anderson found himself facing a tough decision. To follow the bear further would mean putting the entire crew and ship in danger. But something in the animal's behavior prevented him from deciding to turn back. He looked at the approaching storm clouds, then at the bear swimming alongside the ship, feeling the weight of responsibility pressing on his shoulders. At that moment, the lookout shouted that he saw something in the distance. His voice cracked with excitement, drawing everyone's attention. The crew rushed to the sides of the ship, pushing and shoving to get a better view. Through the thickening fog and waves, they saw something unusual on the horizon, but it was hard to make out exactly what it was. The air was thick with the tension of anticipation. The bear, hearing the lookout's shout, let out a loud roar that seemed to crack the very sky. It swam even faster, its movements becoming more urgent and determined. Its behavior was now so agitated that there was no doubt. They were approaching the solution to this mystery. Emily felt a chill of anticipation run down her spine. As they got closer to the unknown object, the tension on the ship reached its peak. The storm was closing in, and thunder could already be heard in the distance. Visibility worsened by the minute, and the fog thickened as if trying to hide the answer from them. Captain Anderson knew they had less and less time to make a decision. His hands gripped the wheel tightly, his knuckles white with tension. When they got closer, through the veil of fog, it became clear that there was a large ice field ahead. At first glance, it was no different from the hundreds of others they had seen in the Arctic. However, the bear was clearly excited to see it. It began making strange noises, a mix of growling and whimpering, and its behavior became even more insistent. Captain Anderson ordered the ship to stop at a safe distance from the ice field. The waves were getting higher, and it was too dangerous to get too close to the unpredictable ice. The ship shuddered from the impact of the waves, like a living creature sensing impending danger. Dr. Harris, ignoring the strengthening wind that tousled her hair, asked for permission to lower the boat into the water for closer investigation. Her eyes were burning with determination and scientific curiosity. The captain hesitated. The storm was already very close, its roar drowning out all other sounds. But Emily's persistence and the bear's unexplainable behavior made him agree. Though with great reluctance, he knew that this decision put not only the success of the expedition at risk, but also the lives of people. Emily, Mike, and Tom put on life jackets and checked their gear before getting back into the boat. Their faces were serious but full of determination. The waves tossed the small craft from side to side like a toy, but they stubbornly pushed forward toward the ice field. The bear swam alongside them, constantly looking back as if urging them to hurry. Its enormous body next to the fragile boat looked even more impressive and intimidating. As they got closer to the ice, they began hearing strange sounds. At first, they thought it was just the wind or the ice cracking, but soon realized that the sounds were more like faint whimpering or crying. These sounds made their hearts race even faster, and their hands gripped the oars more tightly. The team began closely inspecting the surface of the ice, trying to find the source of the strange sounds. Every crack, every shadow on the ice could hide the answer to the mystery. Meanwhile, the bear climbed onto the ice and began pacing back and forth, as if pointing to something. Its huge paws left deep prints in the snow. And then they saw it. 
In a large hollow in the ice lay two small bear cubs. They looked emaciated and weak, clearly unable to get out of their icy trap on their own. Now everything became clear. This huge polar bear was, in fact, a mother bear, desperately trying to save her cubs. She wasn't just chasing the ship, she was seeking help from humans. This discovery shocked everyone on board. No one could believe that a wild animal was capable of such a deliberate act. Captain Anderson immediately organized a rescue operation. He knew time was short. The ice could start melting or drifting at any moment, putting the cubs' lives in danger. The crew quickly devised a rescue plan. Using special equipment, they carefully lifted the cubs from the icy trap and brought them aboard the ship. All the while, the mother bear watched closely but didn't interfere with the humans. Once the cubs were safely on board, the team began administering first aid. Dr. Harris examined the cubs and was relieved to find that despite their exhaustion, they hadn't suffered any serious injuries. Captain Anderson decided to take the bear family to the nearest large piece of stable ice. The journey took several hours, during which the mother bear followed the ship closely. Finally, they reached a suitable spot. The cubs were carefully lowered onto the ice, and their mother quickly joined them. The crew excitedly watched the heartwarming reunion of the family. Before leading her cubs away, the mother bear turned to the ship one last time and let out a soft growl. The crew took it as a kind of thank you from the animal. Then she slowly led her cubs deeper into the icy wilderness, while the people watched the departing bear family for a long time. This unusual story became a symbol of the amazing connection between humans and wildlife. It showed that even in the harshest conditions of the Arctic, understanding and cooperation between species are possible. Captain Anderson, Dr. Harris, and the entire crew of the Polar Star would never forget this incredible adventure. It not only changed their view of the intelligence and emotional world of animals, but also reminded them of the importance of treating nature and its inhabitants with care.